In this video, I'm going to show you how to back up your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games using one of my favorite uh, retro tools for backing things up, the Retro Stage Retro Blaster. So the Retro Stage Retro Blaster has been just one of the most versatile tools that I've been using over the last year or so, and I just absolutely love that it's so easy to dump your cartridge-based games, so... They have adapters for NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy slash Game Boy Advance, and a new TurboGrafx-16 slash PC Engine uh, element came out. Genesis, forgot about Genesis. But there's a ton of systems that you can dump with this thing. It's relatively inexpensive to get the entire setup. And it's just another great tool for doing homebrew games as well, if that is something you're into. But in this video, specifically, we're covering backing up your Game Boy cartridges and save files. So... Let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started with this process, you're going to need to get a Retro Stage Retro Blaster Programmer and Dumper from Retro Stage. So you need to pay attention to the site to know when they're out of stock. There'll be a notice here saying when the next stock plan is appearing. It looks as of this video, there are some in stock, so it's a good time to order if you are interested. But you can grab the programmer and then you can choose your preferred cartridge adapter here. So Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. 59.50 plus tax, so relatively inexpensive, like I said. Then, of course, if you're interested, you could grab more adapters as you want. So NES, SNES, N64, Genesis, Turbo Graphics, and there you go. You could have the whole setup. And as you can see, they're relatively inexpensive to get the adapters. Now, from here, you could just go ahead and insert your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance adapter into the Retro Blaster, and you'll notice that there is a nice little divot printed on the side of the adapter that corresponds to a printed divot on the Retro Blaster itself. So this lets you know you're inserting it the right way. Now from here, get the included USB cable plugged into your PC directly. Don't use a USB hub for this one, it could cause problems, so you want to directly plug it into your computer. And then just plug the other end into your Retro Blaster. Now just get the latest version of the Retro Blaster software downloaded to your PC. So link to this will be in the description below. So you just grab the latest version. Now get the program extracted. It's in zip format, so you should be able to use pretty much anything for it. There we go. So now you can just store it wherever you want to on your computer. So I'm just gonna move it over into my D drive so I don't have to worry about it getting lost or something. So you can see I have an older version of the Retro Blaster software here. So I'm just gonna delete that and replace it with my new one. There we go, cool. Let's just go ahead and get it opened. And there we go. And then you can make sure that it's detecting your Retro Blaster by pressing the version button up here and it should tell you that you have which version of the Retro Blaster programmer dumper you got, which firmware version it's on, and then your software version, so cool. Seeing it just fine. Now it is worth noting if you're on Windows 7 or older, you probably need to install a driver file and that's located in the folder there. So I'm on Windows 11, I don't have to do that. So I can't exactly show it off right now. But anyway, once the software is ready to go, just go ahead and click on the Game Boy, Game Boy Color tab. We're gonna start here first. So on the Retro Blaster itself, there is a voltage switch to let you change between five volt and three volt systems. So Game Boy and Game Boy Color, you need to have this set to five volts. Once set, go ahead and insert the Game Boy cartridge of choice that you wish to dump. So I'm going to start with Pokemon Red. So with the game cart in place, I'm just going to click on Dump ROM. And then I'm going to save the games to my desktop for the time being. So here we go, Pokemon Red. Perfect. And then the dumping process should begin automatically. And there we go, my Pokemon Red cartridge has now been dumped. And now I can also back up my save file that's on Pokemon Red. So on this Pokemon Red cartridge, I converted it to a Mew distribution cart uh, about a year back. So that's the save file that's still on it, so I don't really care too much about that save file, but just for demonstration purposes, you just click on dump SRAM, and then name it the same as your uh, Pokemon save, or Pokemon game dump.
And there we go. These are now ready to use in either emulation or an EverDrive. Just wherever you want to use them, you now have a Pokemon Red ROM file and then a Pokemon Red save file that corresponds to said ROM file. So, cool deal. So, for demonstration purposes, if I were to head into RetroArch here, I would need to change the save file extension to work for it, but... I just need to rename this save files extension to work with RetroArch real quick. So just change it from .save to .sram. Drag it into my RetroArch saves folder. Load up RetroArch here. Go to load content. Go to my desktop. And then grab that Pokemon, uh, that Pokemon Red ROM here. Load it up in same boy. That's loud. And there we go. So that is my Pokemon Red cartridge that I just dumped from my physical cart and the Mew distribution save that was on said cart. So there we go. Beautiful. And this is the same process that you will use for Game Boy Color games and any other Game Boy games. So you can just go through and start dumping all of your games until you complete it or get bored and want to do something else for a little bit. Now one thing to note with Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, you want to choose the .gbc extension for Game Boy Color games so that way emulators will automatically load them up in Game Boy Color format if you use .gb. They might load up in a Game Boy profile instead of gbc, it really depends on the emulator, but it's always good practice to choose the correct uh, um, extension there. Now moving on to Game Boy Advance games, things need to change up just a little bit. So that voltage switch that we talked about earlier needing to be into the 5 volt position for Game Boy games, they now need to be set to the 3 volt position for Game Boy Advance games, otherwise it can damage your games. And now same thing, just get your game of choice and put it into the Retro Blaster. So we're going to start with Pokemon Fire Red because why the heck not? But now in the Retro Blaster software, just go ahead and click on the GBA tab. And then the process is pretty much the same from here. Just click on Dump ROM. Now the GBA dumper might ask you for the size of the cartridge being dumped in megabytes. So not as straightforward as the Game Boy Color for some things, but that's okay. So for Pokemon Red... <laughs> So for Pokemon Fire Red, I know this is a 16 megabyte game, so you will likely have to Google up some sizes if it doesn't automatically detect it. So once set, just press OK and wait for it to do its thing. One thing I forgot to mention is you can actually use the no intro dat section to look up a game in question to figure out its file size, as well as its save type, since you have to choose between a number of different save types for Game Boy Advance games. So Pokemon Fire Red, we can see that the size is um, listed here, so you'll need to do some math to convert it over to megabytes if need be. But we can also see that the save type is listed under a couple of the backup options here. So US version, flash 1 megabit. So there we go. So to back up my Pokemon Fire Red save file, I just need to dump the flash. And then name it after the ROM. And there we go. And there you have it, a way of dumping your Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance saves with the wonderful Retro Blaster programmer here from Retro Stage. So again, Game Boy Advance games are a little bit more involved in the dumping process than Game Boy and Game Boy Color, but still just a great way to back up your physical collection. That way you never have to worry about it dying, losing your saves, like can't put a price on that in my opinion so hope this tutorial helps a lot of you get your games backed up to use an emulation flash drives however you want to use those files because hey it's your games your saves now you can put them wherever you want but anyway check out retro stage check out the retro blaster again i love this little piece of hardware it has been just so nice in backing things up creating homebrew carts that you can use on real systems like it's it's so cool but anyway, I think that about covers it, so we're going to call that video here. But thank you so much as always for watching. 
Be sure to hit thumbs up, thumbs down, depending on how much you like this video, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see, so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. But if you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen around here. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing all of this content to each and every one of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. You're amazing. Thank you for believing what we do here and just being complete rock stars. Just mm, thank you so much. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.